This is a question so many of us have been discussing, uh, especially if you've got a child in your house. It's a, we've, it's a question we've all thought about. At what age should we get our child a smartphone? Thank goodness you're here because we've been talking about this all morning long. Okay. Gail Bell is here with some advice on how to figure out the answers to these questions. And where do we even start when it comes to trying to figure out this big, big question? Well, many parents wish there was a law. Because right? then it would be, well, the law it's says. Decided. Exactly. That's right. But there is a legal guideline for parents. So it is one that parents need to take the time to honestly uh, think about. And there's lots of information out there, again, on the internet to yes. help us. Um, one great website is Common Sense Media. Okay. And I just, uh, they have a little set of questions that's awesome. For example, I won't read them all, but one says, you know, can they be trusted? to text, not text during class, disturb others with conversations, and use the text, photo, and visual functions responsibly, not to embarrass or harass others. We are giving them a powerful communication and Absolutely. production tool. Yes. We're not just talking uh, about a phone or texting. We right. are now, you know, they can broadcast their status and their location. They can download just about anything mm. from the world. Wow. So even though technology's changed, parenting hasn't. So we right. need to get back to what is the responsibility of a parent before we hand over this huge device. huge yeah. device I think that question points to this idea of the maturity of the child so that there's exactly. not necessarily an age but it's the maturity of the child yes I agree with you very very much and and will support you in that so you have to look wh where is my child because every child's an individual and they develop sure. as individuals sure. so we need to be careful the stats do say that the average age in the last four years has gone down from 12 to 10 mm. years old. Right. So parents, again, I encourage you to just take the time and question yourself. Why are we doing this? Is there huge convenience in your child having a phone? Yes. Yes. There's huge convenience. Of One, you can contact them at any point in time and they can contact you. But on the flip side of that, they're now saying kids uh, don't have as many problem solving strategies because we'll just text mom or dad and they'll That's tell them. us and ask right. them. Right. Um, so there's huge convenience. We also have to make sure when they have it and how they're using it. So parents right. do need to take the time to set the guidelines around it, what's right for your family, right? Um, and then follow through consistently. Consistently. I think that's a big part of it. And they have to know that there's consequences. So if you've come up with this plan... And write it you, down. Right, and write it down. Yes, sign a contract yes, or something like yes. that. Yes, yes. Because if they violate that plan and the rules that you've set out, then there needs to be very mm. severe consequences, I think. Yes. That phone needs to go away for a while. Clearly, you're not ready. You're not ready. Your yeah. behavior is telling us at this point in time there are devices that you can put on a child's phone I'm to sure. track, but I would encourage parents to let the child know that that's happening versus sneaking behind right. the back. Yes. 66% um, of parents in the United States, and I don't think we can say Canada's far from that, say they argue daily, daily with their children about the use of their phone. Really? Of their smartphone. So is that how we want to be spending our time? Right. No. And my eight-year-old has just started grabbing my phone from me. Right. right. Like, and that's another reason uh, slash excuse parents say they're giving, sure. buying their own children. Sure. It hasn't changed my mind. Yes, it's annoying and it can be challenging, but it hasn't changed my mind yet. Like I know at eight, we're not ready. Okay. So here's something we need to hang on to. The technology experts okay. suggest very strongly 12 minimum, 14 is better. And they do say the later the better. And we have to think oh. it's a bi biological thing as well, the brain development. Right. So until your child has, you know, some control, some restraint, which comes later in life, and maybe some face-to-face -face communication skills, yes. hang on as long as you can. It's not about making your child happy, doing what your neighbors are doing. It's what's right for your family. And more importantly, to keep your child safe yes. and develop healthy. Because if that, they have a phone, so now we have another screen, we have yes. the television, we have the iPad. So it's not that we're saying they can't be on the internet or use technology. It's how and when and how much. Right. And we discussed this earlier as well on the show that once you're in the game, you're in the game. Right? Oh, so yeah. there's no going back, really, once you've already well, given it. Well, if you put it in the well, contract. Unless right. they're violating yes, those yes. rules that you've and set we, forth. And we have to realize it's part of today's world, too. Right. So saying blanket, no, never. Right. That doesn't, doesn't make really work. Sense. No, it doesn't. No. Great information, Gail. Yeah. This is a big decision for all of us. Thank you so much for that.